All right, so today I have a special video plan for you guys. In order to add tracking capabilities to my XOS 2 EQ5 mount, I ordered the OnStep V4 Pro Controller Kit from Terence Industry. And today I'm going to show you what comes in the box and I'll also go through the installation process step by step. So without further ado, let's get this show on the road. Hi, I'm Bogdan Damian and welcome to Video Observatory. If you are not already familiar with OnStep, it is an aftermarket solution that adds full go-to tracking capabilities to a manually controlled mount. Today I have the Exos 2 version here. The really nice thing about this kit is that it comes ready to use out of the box. Only attaching the motors to the mount is necessary. Once this is done, the mount can be controlled wired by using a smart hand controller or wirelessly via Wi-Fi or Bluetooth using any device you want. It can be your Windows running laptop, your phone, your tablet or an ASI Airbox. It's very versatile. Alright, now let's look at what's in the box. The whole kit was delivered in this rather unassuming box and inside we find a pair of decently long control cables for the servo motors, both featuring a GX16 4-pin aviator connector. Next there is a USB Type-A to USB Type-B cable for connecting the module to the computer. Since the tracking enabled by this kit uses belts and pulleys rather than gears, there is a pair of synchronizing wheels and the corresponding belt for each of the two servos. Next we can find a servo for the declination axis, which has already been mounted inside the corresponding metal housing and is ready for attaching it to the mount. This applies to the servo for the right ascension axis as well. Then we have the OnStep tracking module, featuring on this side a USB hub with three USB Type-B connectors and three DC output connectors for powering different accessories like heater strips, for example. Turning it one side over, we find the radio antenna for Bluetooth and Wi-Fi as well as the connectors for four different servos, including the ones for right ascension and declination axis. On the other side we find a 2.5mm DSLR shutter control connector, a connector for a smart hand controller, a USB Type-A interface to connect to a computer or ASI Airbox, a 12V DC power in and a couple of LED status indicators. And finally there is a bag with everything you need for installing the whole kit onto the mount. Speaking of installing, let's see how this is done. Alright, so let's start with installing the right ascension motor. For this we need to insert the longer bolt through the mount where the joint is and screw the motor housing in, but only a few threads. We are going to tighten it on later. It's a good idea to leave it loose like this so it has plenty of wiggle room when we are going to attach the belt to the pulleys. Next. The 48 tooth wheel needs to be inserted onto the rotating shaft of the EQ mount and then tightened down. Make sure to leave a 1mm gap between the wheel and the housing of the mount to avoid any friction problems later on. Next comes the small synchronizing wheel, which for the time being should be kept loose after sliding it onto the motor's shaft. This helps with the next step putting the 162 tooth belt on. Now it's time to tighten everything up, starting with the bolt holding the servo. Make sure that the motor stays leveled and doesn't shift while tightening down. With the belt on, it's time to tighten down the smaller wheel as well, but before that make sure that the belt is positioned in a straight line between the two wheels. This will reduce wear on the belt considerably. The final step is to stretch the belt so it doesn't slip. For this, loosen up the four screws that attach the motor to its housing. I've already done this off camera, so now I can start pulling a bit on the motor to stretch the belt. When you do this, 
Make sure not to overstretch it. Leave a tiny bit of give. This is because with lower temperatures, the bed will contract and become less flexible. Overstretching it now at room temperatures means that it might tear during cold winter nights when the mount is outside. Finally, tighten the four screws back up while keeping the bed stretched. Alright, now we are done with the first motor. Let's move on to the second one, the one for the declination axis. This one is just as easy to install as the one before. First, start by sliding the flathead bolt into the notch on the motor's housing, like this, and move it into the second slot. Then insert the motor from under the EQ mount, and while holding it with one hand, use the other one to put the supplied gasket onto the screw, followed by the thumb wheel. Make sure to tighten the thumb wheel only a few threads to allow for some wiggle room when attaching the belt, just like we did with the first motor. As we did before, we now insert the 48 tooth synchronizing wheel onto the declination shaft of the mount and then tighten it down. Make sure to leave a 1mm gap between it and the housing of the mount. Next, slide the smaller wheel onto the motor's shaft, but don't tighten it down yet. Then add the shorter 152 tooth belt and position it across both wheels. Alright, now we can proceed and tighten everything up. Start with the thumb wheel for the motor. While doing this, make sure the motor remains straight and doesn't shift under pressure. Next, make sure that the belt is straight and then tighten the smaller synchronizing wheel down as well. Finally, make sure that the belt is stretched, but don't overstretch it. Just as we did earlier, unscrew the four screws attaching the motor to its housing and then gently pull on the motor. When the belt is nice and stretched, tighten the four screws back up. Now the declination servo is ready to go as well. The last step is to attach the on-step module to one of the tripod legs. For this, we use the supplied strip of Velcro. Before you can do this, though, you will need to attach the bracket to the back of the module first. I have already done this off camera, so now I can simply tighten the Velcro strip around one of the tripod legs and attach the module this way. After a bit of small adjustments and cable management, the final result should look something like this. The only thing missing now is to connect it to a power supply and fire up the on-step module. Speaking of power supplies, with only the two servos and the module itself, a DC power supply capable of delivering 12 volt and a minimum of 3 amps of current is necessary. Keep in mind that depending on what accessories you decide to power with this module, the power consumption can get much higher and the power supply needs to be able to cover that. This is why I would recommend using a power supply capable of delivering 12 volts and a minimum of 5 amps. If you are interested in seeing this setup in action, leave a comment below and I might make another video showing you how to connect and control this module using a phone or laptop via Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. Alright, that's been it for now. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe if you did and I'll catch you in the next one.